Geometry Unit 2, Lesson 18, Medians and Altitudes of Triangles. So in this lesson, we want to look at two other types of segments in triangles, medians and altitudes. They are also going to be concurrent in different points. And the medians are going to be concurrent in the centroid, and the altitudes, they meet at a point called the orthocenter. I'll remind you that perpendicular bisectors meet at the circumcenter, and angle bisectors meet at the incenter. And then we're also going to apply different theorems like the centroid theorem and use those to find different lengths. And also we're going to find the equations of medians and, and altitudes in the coordinate plane. So what is a median of a triangle? If you take the midpoint of a side, for example, if you found the perpendicular bisector, you don't use the bisector, but you find the midpoint and then go from the midpoint to that opposite angle, that is called a median of the triangle. So if I found this midpoint now and I do that, that's a median. And if I find this midpoint, that will be the median. It turns out that those always meet in a point called the centroid. The centroid is the point of concurrency of those three medians. And it's where a triangle will balance the most easily. So here we have three medians that have been drawn, meaning that X is the midpoint of PQ, Y is the midpoint of QR, and Z is the midpoint of PR, and then I drew those segments, the centroid is that point C. For a particular vertex, which one is longer? Is it longer to go from the centroid to the side or from the centroid to the vertex? So if you look for any of them, centroid to side, centroid to vertex, centroid to side, centroid to vertex. It's always longer to go from the centroid to the vertex. In fact, we can say more than that, so let's look at that. I'm going to use my paper. I'm going to measure XC with just a paper here. I'm going to put and find out how long that is, and then I'm going to mark, and you'll see that to go from there, I go here, I can go exactly two of them. So this was actually CR is twice what XC is, and therefore XR is one, two, three of those. It is three of those lengths. Well, let's do it for another one. Let's do it for YC. YC is from here to here. So this longer one is now YC. If I take that and mark that here, that's one. And you'll again find that this is a second one. PC will be twice YC, and therefore the whole thing will be one, two, three of those lengths. So without measuring them, what do you think is the relationship between ZC, CQ, and ZQ? So take a moment and write down what you think those are. So CQ, which is the longer part, has to be twice CZ. And then the whole thing, which is QZ, will be three times CZ. Also, you could say that CZ is a third of the whole segment. And you could also say that this is um, CZ is one half of that CQ. And we also know that this long one is two thirds of the whole thing. So that's what the centroid theorem says. It says the centroid of a triangle is located two-thirds of the distance. So this is the whole distance. It's two-thirds of the distance from each vertex to the midpoint. So if you take that length, it is two-thirds along that length. This means that the centroid divides it in a two. This part is two to one of these, a two to one ratio. And you're going to use those. So sometimes you might use a half. Sometimes you might use a third. You might use two. You might use three. You might use two thirds. You might use three halves. And you'll be able to find those depending on which segment they gave you in order to find the others. So here we have given lengths. We have AF. That's the whole thing is nine. And CE, which is this whole one, is 7.2. How would we find AG relative to AF? Well, AG, this is the longer one, it is two-thirds of the whole length, so it's two-thirds of AF. So that means it's two-thirds of our nine, 
2 thirds of 9 is 6. So now this will be 6. What would GF be? They didn't ask us for that, but what would GF be? GF is now 1 half of a G, so that would only be 3. So this part is 3, this part 6, the whole thing is 9. What about GE? GE is the shorter part. GE is 1 third of CE. It's one third of that whole length. So a third of 7.2, I believe is 2.4. And now what would happen if I wanted GC? They didn't ask it for that one. I'm going to add that. GC, how could I find that one now? Well, I could either take the whole thing and subtract that part, or I know that it's twice GE. So I would just double this number. That would be 4.8. Again, these two things together add up to that whole 7.2. And if we were given like, um, like this one, I would take half to find this one. It just depends on what you're given. Make sure you use those ratios in the way that they're given. Now, if we have coordinates of the vertices, so we're not just constructing them. Here, if we were constructing, we would have to construct the midpoint by finding the perpendicular bisector and just using the midpoint and then drawing those medians. But if we have the coordinates, we can calculate the midpoints of any two sides, and then we draw the medians, and the centroid will be where they meet, or we can directly use the centroid formula, and we'll do it both ways here and show that they give you the same thing. The centroid says it's the average x-coordinate and the average y-coordinate will give you the centroid. So we're first going to do it by the midpoint formulas. Here we have Q, R, and P. We're going to let M be the midpoint of Q, R. So how do I find the midpoint? What's in between 0 and 6? And I'm not sure why I put an equal there, but that's all right. In between 0 and 6 is 3. In between 8 and 4 is 6. So that will be that midpoint. If you didn't know, remember that you could add the 2 and divide by 2 for each of those. 8 plus 4 over 2, sorry. Or I can just tell what they are. And we want that to be the midpoint of QP. By the way, this is 3, 6. So this is that. And now where will the... This was for this side. So the median to the opposite side is this one. This is a median now. This is our point M. N is going to be the midpoint of QP, so what's in between 0 and 3? If we didn't know, we would add them and divide by 2. That will give 1.5. And then the median of the y-coordinate between 8 and 0 is 4. Or again, you could add them and divide by 2. 1.5 is here, and 1.54 would take us right till there. This is the point N, and if we connect these, this is now a horizontal line. And finally, we have C, which is the centroid. This is the point where they intersect. This is at the point 3, 4. Now we could have found the other one as well. We could have found the midpoint of this. The number in the middle of 3, 6 is 4.5. The middle of 4 and 5 is 2. So this would have been the other midpoint if we had chosen to use it. And then we would have found the median. And you will see that that median also will go through that point. So I didn't ask to find it, but we could have found that one as well. It would also intersect in that point. Now what if we use the centroid formula directly? That says we have to find the average x-coordinate for all three points. So we're going to take all of the x-coordinates, add them, and divide by 2. I mean by 3, sorry, we're taking the average. And then we're taking all the y-coordinates. We're going to take 8 and 4 and 0 and divide by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. That will give us our centroid also as 3, 4. Now suppose we wanted to find the equations of these medians. So I have now done QL. I've actually done the one we're going to find this equation. We have to use what the slopes are. MP, though, happens to be a vertical line. 
So that's an x equals equation. That's an x equals 3. And r happens to be a horizontal line. So that's an equation y is equal to 4. For ql, though, we need to find the slope of that line. So I've already found that here. I, I told you what the midpoint was. The midpoint L, we'll just add that up here. We found it that was 4.52. So if I want to find the slope, how can I find the slope of QL? I need the change in the Y over the change in X. I can use the fact that it goes through that point. So to go from 0 to... 3 is a horizontal change of a positive 3, but then the y went down by 4. So it is down by 4, and then right by 3 would be the slope. So I now know that my equation is y is minus 4 thirds x plus b, and I can use any point on that line in order to come with the y-intercept. Well, we already know that the y-intercept is 0, 8, so b is the 8, that's given because it goes through that point, so that equation would be y is minus 4 thirds x plus 8. So you, in the coordinate plane, you can also find the equations of the, mid, of the medians. Now we're going to look at altitudes. An altitude of a triangle is a perpendicular segment from the vertex to the line that's containing the opposite side. It may not actually be inside of it. It may not even actually touch the opposite side. It may actually be outside, and I'll look at that in the pictures down here. Every triangle, though, has three altitudes. It can either be inside, outside, or, or a side of the triangle. The altitude is often called the height of the triangle. Again, there are three different altitudes depending on what you're using as the base. So if this is your base, this would be the altitude. If this is your base, this would be the altitude. If this is your base, this would be the altitude, and so on. To, oh, sorry, I went out of the triangle. If this is our um, base, this would be the altitude here. If this is our base, this part here is considered our altitude, and we need to actually look at the extended altitude when we talk about them meeting. So if we extend the altitudes until they meet, the point of concurrency of the lines that contain those altitudes if it's an acute angle, it will be inside of the triangle. For an obtuse triangle, it will be outside. Like here, this is an obtuse triangle, so they're actually meeting outside. And if it's a right triangle, it will actually meet at the vertex of that triangle. So in this particular one, you'll see that all of the altitudes happen to be inside. So this is the altitude that runs from here to here. This is the altitude from here to here. And this is the altitude. When we extend the lines, it really doesn't matter. They all meet. For this particular one, this is the triangle. Here is the altitude to that side. For this one, this is the altitude. I had to actually extend the side and then get the altitude. And then for the last one, uh, the last side here, which is this one, I again have to extend that, and then this is the altitude. The three altitudes themselves don't meet, but if you extend them, they will meet at the orthocenter. Again, they meet outside here because this is an obtuse triangle. And then when it's a right triangle, these sides are the altitudes, the two that are perpendicular, and then the other one from the hypotenuse will actually meet at that um, right angle. So now we want to find the orthocenter on here. So we need to draw the altitudes. Uh, for this particular one, we have a side here which is horizontal, so that will be an easy side again. We want to do the perpendicular to that opposite vertex. This will be the altitude for that side will be this uh, right there. And I might have to extend it in order for them to meet, but because I can see that this is an acute triangle, I won't have to because I know it's going to meet on the inside. Now, what will the altitude be for this one? Well, I have to look at its slope. The slope of this one is, you're going right one and up three, so the slope is three. That means from this vertex, I have to have a negative reciprocal slope, which would be minus one-third. So I would go 
up one and left three, up one and left three, up one and left three, that would now be my altitude. It's not going to meet the side at a nice point. Now those two meet at two, two. So the orthocenter C is that point two, two. And what if I wanted to find the third one? Well, let's just find it independently and we'll see that it also goes through there. We need the slope of this side. The slope of this side is a minus one because it's going down one and right one, down one and right one. The slope of this side is minus one, so what should be the slope from here is the negative reciprocal. The slope of negative one is a positive one, the negative reciprocal, so I'm going to over one, up one. That will go through all of those points. And this now happens to be the other altitude to this side, and we see that all three of them do actually meet at that point. So now if we look at the altitude from angle P, what is its equation? So we're asked to find the equations. This is a vertical line, so it is an x equals equation. It's x equals 2. The altitude for uh, let's say O, because that had the easier slope. That one had a slope of 1. In fact, it's going through 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. That's simply the line y is equal to x, because that has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0. And we'll see that if we wanted to find the orthocenter from there, what's the solution to this? Well, y is to equal x, and x equals 2. So the orthocenter would be 2, 2. That's the solution to that system of two equations. Now what about that third altitude? So this is now the altitude for angle Q. We also found its slope before. Remember this had a slope of 3, so the altitude had a slope of minus 1 third, the opposite reciprocal, and then we can add B. And then we need A points, so we could use 2, 2, or we could use 8, 0. Let's just use 8, 0. We know that 0 is minus 1 third times 8 plus b. And then this will be minus 8 thirds. So when we add it, we'll be, we would get b as 8 thirds. So the final equation for that would be my, we, b equals minus 1 third of x plus b. And I'll just tell you that we could construct these as well. I didn't show the construction here, but how do we drop this perpendicular? Remember, we have to make an arc so that it touches in two places, and then from those, find the perpendicular bisector of that segment. Again, you may have to extend the segment in order to do that. When you reach, in order for it to touch in two places, you may have to actually extend that line.